Well, here we are with the 2020 season coming soon. We're only about a month away from the Daytona 500. And the imminent news that was expected for a long time now is that NASCAR is reducing the downforce at short tracks and road courses for the 2020 Cup Series. This is not surprising at all because it is the right decision and it's the right move. However, we should have never been here in the first place to actually make this news. So today, NASCAR announced a reduced downforce package designed to enhance competition on road courses and the circuit's shorter oval tracks. The changes include significantly sp uh, smaller spoilers, decreasing over 5 inches, splitters, and other aerodynamic devices in an effort to place a greater emphasis on handling and driver input with less stabilizing downforce on those tracks. The package draws inspiration from similar rules used in the 2017 and 2018 seasons. Our first and foremost core goal is to deliver great racing, and I think we constantly evaluate the things that we do on the racetrack, however, and wherever we need to, to improve the situation for them, said John Props, the NASCAR Senior Vice President of Innovation and Racing Development. And as part of our normal ongoing critique of ourselves and how we're doing, we just felt like this was a good opportunity for us to improve the on-track product at the short tracks and road courses. The specific changes to the tracks will be a significantly smaller rear spoiler which shrinks from an 8 inch height to a 2.75 inch height. The front splitter's overhang will now measure a quarter inch down from 2 inches and with approximately 2 inch wings which are reduced from 10.5 inches and also alteration to the radi radiator pan removing its vertical fencing in an effort to reduce front end downforce the dimensions of the pan remain the same. And these changes will be in effect for 9 of the 24 layouts, likely for the last time, because in 2021, this car will not exist anymore. So for the last time in 2020, over the 9 tracks, 6 of the oval tracks are Bristol, Dover, Martinsville, New Hampshire, Phoenix, and Richmond, and of course, 3 road course races that these rules will also be in place, Charlotte, uh, Roval, Sonoma, and Watkins Glen. John went on to say, when we consider changes to the aero package, we can often look back on our playbook, if you will, from seasons past, and there are obviously some trade-offs that you make between introducing something completely new that the industry has never seen versus something that we have run before, where we have a playbook from our side and teams have set up books from their end. We felt like we were going to look at the aero packages that we have run in the past and looking back at a lot of competitive metrics that we track, we feel like the 2017 levels of downforce on those types of tracks had a pretty good side-by-side -side racing that our fans enjoyed. He went on to say that instead of creating new aerospec, which we're getting one next year, so it doesn't matter, but instead of creating new aerospec for 2020, which yes, it would have been a waste of time since you have what's coming in 2021, we feel like going back to something that's tried and true for us will make it a package we have run recently. This all makes sense, and this is all a good move, and this is the right move, and this should have never actually been changed from years past. NASCAR wanted to use one package, one spoiler, one splitter for most of the tracks, but they realized, and they should have known this when they were sitting at the table, that when you take a 550 horsepower car and stick a massive spoiler and a massive splitter on it, and then you take it to a short track, it's, what are you doing? That package is designed for drafting and, and for you to close up the field of play and have more on-throttle racing, which does not agree at all with short tracks. How NASCAR somehow managed to do that and go through with it, and the teams also went through with it and everything, how that managed to happen is beyond me and absolutely ridiculous, and it does not put the the fans at first and racing first, which is what it should be. Racing should be first. Fans should be first. Not what the fa the teams think, where the teams are like, hey, we don't want to have multiple different spoilers or spoilers. By the way, the spoilers are actually given to the teams by NASCAR, so that's completely NASCAR's decision. They could have made the spoiler smaller. It doesn't really matter. But this is what I'm getting at. We have this great news from NASCAR today that, you know, we're going to the reduced downforce of short tracks, which is great. That's not a problem at all, and it's good news. It's positivity. Thank God. We're going to have better races at short tracks and road courses for the 2020 season, and hopefully we're going to have really good races in 2021 with a brand new car and different maybe rules for the short tracks and road courses there. However, this is the classic creating a problem and then fixing it and then spinning it as a good PR move. You have to give NASCAR credit for the good PR, but don't give them credit for doing what they should have done. It's like if you go to school every day, and you do your homework, and you sit there in your classes, and you listen, and you do well in school. That is what you are supposed to do. You do not get credited, or, or you know, multiple great jobs, and all these rewards, and all this praise for doing what you are supposed to do. And that's what you do at school, right? This is the same thing here. The fact that this problem even existed is a problem, and it shows a lack of transparency from NASCAR. Also, that at the end of the season last year, they never, ever, ever wanted to talk bad about their on-track product, which they knew wasn't good enough. However, they continued to stay silent, and now they come out today 
and say, well, we could go back on our playbook and we think this will get the best results. Why was this not done a year ago? Because there's no reason whatsoever that we should have had high downforce at short tracks and road courses in 2019. It should have never happened. It was a problem that was created for no reason. And now we're just solving that problem. Now we're going back to where we were, which is fine. It's good. All right. But this can't happen continuously. And I'm calling NASCAR out for this because transparency is an important uh, aspect of the sport and also communicating with your fans. If you know that your short track package and your road course races are not living up to the standards because it's your fault, you actually should come out and apologize to the fan base because this is a problem you, NASCAR, created completely yourselves. The blame completely lies at your fingertips for the issues that we had at short tracks and road courses that, again, should have never happened. So the praise that I'm seeing today is good and all, but you have to hold NASCAR accountable that you can't just create a problem and then solve it and think you're going to get away with that. And what's even more worrying is that when 2021 does come around, will NASCAR make the same mistake? Will they take a high downforce, low horsepower package to a short track again with a new car? The new car will affect the racing a considerable amount. But if you come back next year with an 8 inch spoiler and 550 horsepower and you're expecting different results, then you better, better, better make sure that car is suited to that package. Because if it's not, we're going to see dirty air be a problem again. But hopefully it won't be. Props went on to say, certainly from our standpoint, we feel like this is a step in the right direction to create more side-by-side -side exciting moments during the race. Obviously, the proof will be in the pudding, but this is certainly something we have run before that's had good results. Again, nowhere here do they ever apologize or admit their mistakes. Nothing happens. They say a step in the right direction. You took two steps backwards and just went one step forward back to where you were. I'm not trying to be negative. I'm just straight up calling these guys out because again, it's not a step in the right direction. We were here. This wasn't a problem. Then you made it a problem and now you're back to where you were. And again, the focus should all be on 2021 and learning from these mistakes. But I think an apology is deserved. I think admission of mistakes is deserved. I don't see any admission of a mistake. There's never any admission saying we messed up. We are sorry. We apologize for making the, uh, the wrong mistake. We, it, the races didn't play out like we, sh we wanted to. And we made a mistake for 2019. It's none of that. It's the same, the same old nonsense of, well, we're making a step in the right direction. We want side-by-side -side racing. We want passing. We want all this stuff. And you're pitching it as if it's a brand new, great idea. Like, yes, this is a step in the right direction. This is the competitive metrics. This is, I believe, what can make the best racing in these tracks. Yes, it can. And it will. But we cannot create problems and then solve those problems and think we're doing God's work. One more thing I want to talk about is the fact that how this even happened is there's too many voices at the table. You have NASCAR, you have Steve Phelps, you have all of NASCAR's organization. Then you have the owners and the race teams. They have a lot of a say in everything as well. The fans and the drivers, they really don't get any say. And the fact that the drivers don't have any say is just, oh my God. But when you have so many people at the table trying to make a decision, it doesn't end up being the best decision. Imagine if you had 10 of your friends and you all wanted to go to a different kind of restaurant. You're trying to pick one restaurant, but each one of your friends wants to go to a different restaurant. How does it, how would we get the negotiation table? How do we decide where are we going to go to eat? Where, where are we going to go to eat where everyone is happy? Very rarely do you make everyone happy, which is why when NASCAR creates problems like this, because the teams, for example, they don't want to spend extra money. They don't want to go through more testing. They just want everything to be the same, even though you know that it's probably not going to work out on terms of on track product and the fans will be disappointed, which means less ticket sales, which means less revenue overall. But you decide to go with it because the teams are saying, well, you know, we don't want to change it all. We don't want to go through all this testing, blah, blah, blah. We don't want to spend money that way. And NASCAR caves or the negotiations just fall through. And this is what you get for 2019. That's not good. Now, it looks like we came back to the table for 2020 and everyone was like, okay, yeah, 2019 sucked. All right. Yeah, we were really terrible at these tracks. Let's just go back to what we were doing before 2021 kicks in. Point here is. Why do we have so many people at the table? There really should be only a few, specifically from NASCAR, that make these decisions. Drivers can give their input. Teams can give their input. But overall, the decision of what we're going to race, where we're going to do it, how much it's going to cost, that should be NASCAR's decision. There should be one man leading these decisions. 
I really, really hope that happens in the future because I think if we have too many people at the table, we're going to have continuously make mistakes based off benefiting who's who. If we're trying to benefit the owners and the teams to save money, then the racing probably is going to be the best. If we're trying to benefit NASCAR and its tracks for maybe certain race tracks get a better race date or something. So if we could just have less people at the table, I think we could avoid these mistakes because this is something that should have never happened, like I said. However, in the end, heading to the 2020 season, circle these nine racetracks on your calendar if you are a NASCAR fan, because these will be good races this year. Now, don't fool yourselves. Dirty air is still going to be a problem, okay? It's still going to be an issue. You're still going to have difficulty passing, but it will be better. And at road courses, you will see drivers really slide and slick around. But it may, it may mean, to be honest, that you're going to have uh, what we've had the last few years is two or three drivers dominating the race and a 30-second gap between first and third. That usually happens at the road course race, except the Roval, because the Roval's going to be crazy. But at the short tracks, remember, with this car, with the Gen 6 car, the last year of the Gen 6 car, thank God, we will still have issues. However, the, race, the races should be much better, especially tracks like Bristol, Dover, New Hampshire, and Phoenix. I think Richmond will also be helped. Martinsville, there you won't really see that much of a difference. There is a little bit of a difference, especially the drivers can feel it at Martinsville, where Dirty Air does play a factor when you have that massive of a spoiler. But Martinsville usually is always a great race. Bristol will see vast improvement because of the speeds. Same with Dover, same with Phoenix, uh, same with New Hampshire. I think Richmond also will get a, a better sense of racing, mainly because I think you'll be able to move around a lot more, and it's going to open up the track and open up the lanes. And I really personally really like Richmond as a racetrack. Sometimes it doesn't offer the best racing when it comes to side-by-side -side racing, but it's mainly because the drivers are just so, they're so loose coming out of the corners and they're so just on off throttle. It's, it's really fun. So hopefully Richmond's going to be a good race. And this is a good decision before we head into 2021 where hopefully the car that they bring will match the package that they are thinking of. Even if it is 550, 550 horsepower, which is something that a lot of people get confused about sometimes. 550 horsepower at a short track is not a bad idea. It's not, it doesn't mean the racing at short track is going to be terrible. Yes, you want that torque, but if the car is designed to help at these racetracks, then you should be excited. Again, the new car was tested at Richmond. And the drivers are really excited about it, how it handled and how there was a lot more mechanical grip. And that's what you want to hear. If you hear drivers talking about mechanical grip in 2021 at short tracks, I promise you, you will get good racing. So that is the goal. NASCAR, do not create problems, please. Do not do this again, please. And maybe admit to mistakes, please. And apologize to your fan base because it is just well, that was not necessary in 2019. Hopefully you guys learn from this, and hopefully 2020 will be a good season on the short tracks and the road courses, and well, the mile and a halfs, well, I don't know what to say. You know Pocono's probably not going to be a good race, so. and Michigan, and Indianapolis, but sometimes that's how the cookie crumbles. Comment down below with your thoughts on what is going on in 2020. This is good news. Hopefully you guys will enjoy it, and hopefully well, we will have better races at the short tracks, which always are the best racetracks on the circuit, and hopefully get more sooner in the future years. I'll see you guys later. Hope you're having a great day. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram if you're not already. And I'll see you guys later. Peace out.